to loosely paraphrase the Karate Kid, spots on, spots off, spots partially on, okay back to off, definitely on, and off again. The view from Carpata's cliffside parking lot provides a spectacular view, not only of Bonaire's rugged coast, but the masonry staircase and cement slab echo its history. Carpata is located on the grounds of an old plantation, and many of those buildings still stand across the road from the parking lot. They are run down, so use your own risk-reward evaluation to determine how much you want to explore. There is quite a bit of nature to see as you walk around as well. And be sure to check out the water's edge. There are a ton of snails all over the rocks, and we noticed some juvenile fish and crab in a tidal pool. You can enjoy all that during your surface interval, but let's focus on the task at hand. What's the best way to dive Carpata? We have all the details coming up, but first, why not take our subscription challenge? It's pretty easy, just hit that subscribe button. If you already have, get someone else to do it as well. Also, we received a suggestion from Robert R. about including some snorkeling information, so we've started adding some of that. Hopefully, it will be a little more polished after we do a few more. Thank you all for your subscriptions and that suggestion, Robert. Smiley face. Carpata sits in the northwestern part of Bonaire's leeward coast. At just over eight miles northwest of Krylandike, it's a bit of a drive. Follow Kaya Gobernander Nicolas de Brut, which changes to Boulevard Gobernander Nicolas de Brut for 4.7 miles. Near Oil Slick Leap, the road name changes again to Queens Highway. It also narrows to a single lane. Stay on that for 3.4 twisting, turning miles, at which point you will see the plantation buildings on your right and a parking lot on the left. Quick note. At some point, Queens Highway becomes a one-way road. So while you can take that to Carpata, you must take Kaminda Carpata to Rincon and make your way back to Krylandike from there. There is parking on both the left and right sides of the staircase, and there is additional parking across the road in front of the plantation. There are a couple of trees to park under, but other than that, you'll be in the sun. The only amenities are a couple of cement tables and stools to the left of the parking lot. We typically gear up at home, but if you're going for a two-tank dive, you'll have to swap it out anyway, so assemble your equipment wherever it's convenient for you. Once geared up, take the stone staircase down 23 steps and carefully walk over the coral and rock toward the cement slab. There are two methods of entry. Most of the divers we've seen typically walk in on the right side of the cement slab, using it for balance, which definitely helps when the waves are a bit aggressive. We have also seen divers sit at the end of the slab and step in from there. That said, it is very difficult to exit that way, given the large step up. In either case, there is a lot of rock on the bottom. Next to the slab, at the end of the slab, and the surrounding area. Most of it's large and loose, making balance a challenge. 
it's not uncommon to see divers slip, so take small steps, walk slowly, and have your buddy help. Once away from the slab, it's a fairly short swim to the drop-off. The mooring is used by dive boats, and you never know when a group is going to descend, so always maintain awareness near the surface. The curvature of Bonaire, where Carpata is located, means that the reef lies at 205 degrees south-southwest, and the shoreline sits at 25 degrees north-northeast. There is a sight buoy anchored by two large barrels in 20 feet of water, a bit northwest of the entry point. You can use it to check the current. If the buoy appears almost in front of the beach, or the parking lot above, the current is going left. If it's farther right, the current is headed that way. While there are hard and soft coral near the entry point and throughout the shallows, the reef gets more dense closer to the drop-off. So does the fish population. You may see schools of yellow goatfish, smallmouth grunts, and of course lots of brown chromis. The drop-off begins at 15 feet and goes well below 100. Watch to see what the reef and slope look like on the way down? Here you go! One of the highlights of this site are the many deep grooves going up and down the reef. Swimming in and out of those makes it relatively easy to capture photos and video of subjects against a nice clean blue background. Often those grooves form sand chutes, where sand divers and other creatures might be resting. As you're swimming around, look for a well-worn anchor on the southeast side of the reef in about 35 feet of water. Another highlight is the shallows. Because the coral begins very close to the shore, and the shallows have a gradual slope, it's not only great for a safety stop, but snorkeling as well. From the surface, you will easily be able to see a variety of gorgonians and brain coral. There is a fair amount of blade fire coral, and a few elkhorn coral that really stand out. The bottom is a mixture of sand, rock, and coral debris, which provide lots of hiding places for juveniles and algae growth for grazing parrotfish. If you're lucky, there may be a puffer or two hanging out at the edge near the drop-off. Observing underwater behavior is a lot of fun, and perhaps some of the most common you'll see are cleaning stations. Watch as this blue striped grunt pulls in for some dental work. These creole wrasse are loitering, with the hope that the blue and yellow juvenile Spanish hogfish will remove a few parasites from their skin. Other behaviors include this male sergeant major tending to the purple patch of eggs attached to some sheet coral. Unfortunately, this schoolmaster wouldn't let me get close enough to remove the fishing line. If you don't catch any specific behaviors, no worries. Here are a few clips of cool creatures going about their daily business.
Of course we dove here at night, and I must say that anchor is a lot more challenging to find in the dark. As it turns out, lobsters were relatively easy. These two Caribbean spiny lobsters were on a mission to get somewhere, as was this sculptured slipper lobster. But several spotted spiny lobsters were a bit more shy. In addition to sleeping parrot and goatfish, here are a few other things we saw in the creepy night waters. Enjoy!